Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to episode 34 in my second Let's Play series for Anno 1800. In the last episode, we continued building up Crown Farms by developing a new engineer district, and we began building industry to accompany it. The goal today is going to be to raise that industry and build it up so that we can supply and meet the demands of this new engineer district and continuously raise our population to unlock more palace modules back on our home island of swords. So you may remember the last time we had a look here, it was fairly vacant, full of lots of blueprint modules and things like that, but I filled it all out now. I basically just went over to the artisan district, continuously upgraded them and dragged them over to fill in every single little gap that we had essentially so this is kind of it this is kind of done now you know there's some room for more pier to be built out maybe some amenity buildings or um i don't know maybe tourism actually considering yeah why not have it on multiple islands i guess uh so definitely room for a little bit of stuff on the edge of the coastline here but generally speaking this is where all the engineer households that i plan to put down are are, are gonna go uh now in the process of doing this i had to turn off canned food and fur coats in terms of the demand, and actually sewing machines as well. Um, because, of course, the artisans consume those things, and if I wanted to continuously upgrade them and not run out of stuff, I had to just pause the consumption, continuously upgrade, drag them all in, get them laid out, and then now we can allow the consumption again and see our true consumption rates, which are going to be pretty rough, actually. Um, I'm just trying to think. Oh yeah, so one of the first things I did actually, which wasn't covered in the time in uh, any time lapses or anything, was I put down another coffee roaster. And so, to my surprise, actually, three coffee roasters is pretty much all you need. Uh, it looks like four ultimately, right? We're producing eight tons per minute. We're consuming eight tons. We're just slightly under that amount that we need uh, to a decimal point, I guess. So with one more building, we're actually pretty much done. Or you could get some sort of I mean, we're increasing the productivity there 50%. I guess that's why. Uh, but yeah, so add in another one of those and we're done for coffee, which I just, I don't know. I just thought it was quite surprising. Four of those buildings versus a whole island in the New World basically dedicated to it seems to sort out just as many engineers as we have here as in the Old World. So kind of interesting to me, at least. Our engineers are at 2,991 because of the way I had things turned off. So light bulbs canned food, all of this stuff. The only interesting thing, I think, is the penny farthings and sewing machines. We actually have an overabundance of them back on our production island of Lusk here. So if I turn on all islands now, a lot of people said, why don't you turn on all islands? It's because Cape Trelawney was largely a self-contained island, but for some of these things now, we can turn it on and see just what the overall consumption rate globally is of certain things. So, if we take a quick look at penny farthings, we're producing 19 and consuming 16, so we're totally fine there. And then for uh, sewing machines, we're just slightly, slightly under the, um, over the demand, I guess you could say, or over the production limits. Our demand is slightly ahead of our production, just slightly. Which means if we do end up building these town halls, which I guess is the intention, <laughs> we could probably find some items that reduce, you know, even just reduces one of these sectors of how much they consume penny farthings or something like that, you know? So I'm sure that's going to be totally fine. We don't need to change any production back home. So I don't know if I mentioned it yet. So I've actually set up a trade route from Lusk to here with just penny farthings and sewing machines on it. Our old coffee ship, the Nespresso is leading it. We need to rename that, I guess. Um, so yeah, it's on its way with a bunch of stuff. I've set minimum thresholds. We should be totally fine. Uh, at least for the time being. Uh, now, in between episodes, I have some of that footage of me just filling up this area. I guess I didn't want to show it on, I was going to say on stream, in the episode itself, because that would be quite boring. You've seen me do it many times before. But I've got some of it sped up for you in the time lapse that's about to come up. I've also been building up on the farming area on our big plateau, our golden plateau of wheat fields. And uh, I have that recorded for a time lapse as well. It's going to be a fairly quick one, I think, but um, let's begin. All right, so we've got a kind of a quicker time lapse this time. This is mostly a upgrade and replace where, you know, I kind of go over to the artisans, upgrade them into engineers, pull them down, put them in their proper place and get rid of the blueprints. And I decided that, well, I might as well fill out the entire area because ultimately we're going to have to be planning for the full island worth of engineers, right? We're going to have to plan for the amount of demands that we're going to need for this little mini island here. So you might as well just upgrade it all. But it took a huge amount of time, mostly because of... Um, material constraints, right? It's, I think it was something like 50 houses. But the way I do it, it's going from farmer into worker, into artisan, and then into engineer. So, so much material was needed. I actually had to set up a dock lens and ferry stuff in constantly from the old world. So a lot of time passed just doing that. 
Here we are on the Golden Plateau, I'm gonna call it, building the second grain village. This one's kind of smaller, closer to the fuel depot, the thing that's actually supplying all the tractor barns with their fuel to enable bright harvests, increased productivity. And as we get closer down to that fuel station, the idea was that you want things to become a little bit more organized, less village-like, less lived in, more state farm, more control from Hans von Schlong. And uh, I'm fairly happy with how I've done that, but I did leave a little bit. I'm jumping ahead of here, but you'll see it later. I have left... Definitely what I want to do around the fuel station itself is going to be a bit more industrial and a bit more stately. Um, you'll see that later. I put down a lot of malt houses next to it because I was kind of debating in my head, oh, do we put down, do I start putting down the factories and stuff right here? But I think I'll actually move them further down and have even yet even more grain farms and stuff even further on this plateau. Just a couple more. And uh, that way it can start to look a bit more refined and look a bit more like uh, organized, like a state farm. It's hard to explain it without showing it, but anyway. Uh, so yeah, you can just see I'm just doing the standard kind of thing. I have a pub, a market, that's to supply all these little extra houses. I'm happy to put down more farmer houses just because I haven't actually decided where they're going to go yet. Like an actual, f where I'm going to put farmers. It's nice having them in between the actual worker houses. People said that they like that, so I might try and do that here and there when I can. Um, but I was thinking along the river that, well, without seeing it or showing it, it's very difficult to talk about, but the river that sp spreads into all these little mini islands, I was thinking along the extremities of the outside of the river, where the river meets the main continent, if you will, having like just like a layer of houses, like all trailing up alongside it. Maybe, I'll have to see how it looks. But anyway, so because of the little village here, there's a town hall. They have the little town hall across from the pub, looks quite good. And then a bit more paved roads around this area, because like I said, it's getting a bit more built up and a bit more organized, uh, less, less free space for parks, and things like that the the further up grain village has all the windmills and the um not windmills the um just the mills and it has like this big park next to the pub and stuff but this place is a bit more constrained it's a lot smaller it's just like a kind of a more quicker setup and then as we go further down there's not gonna be any houses then from from here on really uh, and as you can see i'm just going through all of the modules just cleaning up all of the little bits of hay like i like to leave the um the kind of hay bales towards the actual houses. So where you've got the really big open stretches, I kind of just leave it as blank golden fields. And then as we get closer to the weird turns, that's where I add the little uh, modules for the grain fields. And that's not an ornament. That's just part, like it's one of the 10 different types of wheat field. Anyway, here's where I added all the uh, malt buildings in and actually just coincidentally added the correct amount to consume perfectly the amount of grain we have. So I was really happy with that. Uh, I wanted to then move and isolate a little area for the fisheries. We needed more fisheries now that we had more farmers. And then I moved the um, the main wharf of the island over to the other side because Docklands is going to be over there and I want them to go to the Docklands first. So I'm going to put Docklands all the way to the very edge later. Um, but yeah, that was kind of it. So that's the, yeah, I'm constantly doing the World's Fair, constantly doing research and stuff like that. And then... I guess just getting a little shot of it there. It looks so good. I love it. I think it looks so good. It's really, really big now, like the whole plateau, the golden plateau. Uh, but yeah, so basically I was trying to work out what I was going to need in the industry section. I, this is where I made the decision. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to have to go through and literally move every and up, upgrade and move every single house that I can. Uh, and then later in the episodes, we're going to be figuring out how to meet all of that demand, essentially. Uh, so here at the Research Institute, I actually completed every single module. So everything's done now in terms of the fields of research. So that's completed. I think I actually talk about that in the episode, so I'll leave it. And then here's when I was donating all my excess items. Uh, to be honest, I didn't really need the research points, and they're going to just stall anyway. So I could have just sold it for money, I suppose. But the time it would take to fill all the ships, just not really worth it. I could have just left it there, to be honest. But I thought it'd be good just to get rid of everything that I had duplicates of. So I just to keep a mental tally when I was putting things in modules. If that makes any sense. Uh, so yeah, pretty much just uh, finishing it up here. I, I try not to dwell on it too much in the time lapse. I actually spent the time lapse up to 12 times speed for this bit. Because <laughs> uh, it was just like, normally it's at 6 times speed. Uh, just because of the amount of houses that I had to push in here. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the reforest tool because then I'll be able to just finish this place really nicely. But yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. Alright, there you have it. The Golden Plateau continues to grow. 
And our little farming villages, our grain villages, we've got like a little smaller secondary one now. I'm sure I talked about it during the time lapse. But something I don't know if I had time to mention is that I added in all of these malt houses to the south of it, right? Because I want to start building up a more contained industry, have a power plant feeding all these areas power and things like that, and have a some sort of trade union surrounding it. Probably going to build it a bit further down in its own isolated area. Like, you might remember many, many episodes ago, we used to have what I called... Um, or rather what you guys called St. James's Gate, the kind of beer, the contained little factory area for beer and for schnapps. And I want to kind of have that again for malt and, and certain things like um, the bakeries, stuff like that, and then have, you know, little fire stations and stuff, a little trade union, have it all sort of self-contained. So it was a bit of a temporary placement putting it here. I just thought because of the actual fuel station is located here, this is where the industry could kind of start to appear. And Maybe to an extent, but I still feel like we could get away with a few more fields around it as we're on the, still on this plateau, which uh, frequently glitches out, as you may notice. There's some weird angles you can find. Let's see if we can get it. Oh, yeah. Loving that. Feels good, man. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Anyway, long story short, we've got a bunch of these things down. If we have a look at our agricultural output now, our wheat, or our grain rather, is 48 to 48 locked. Pretty good. Not everything is even turned on for the amount of consumption. For instance, all the mills are full, so they're not even turning. They're not even doing anything. Uh, but the malt has been made. The reason why I want so much malt, obviously we want it for beer, but we also want it for our coffee production. So like I was saying, I was amazed that only three to four of these buildings can sustain our whole engineer workforce, and I'm not sure if I'm going to go with investors or not on this island. We'll see. Uh, might, might end up needing it for the influence. But, um, yeah, so malt is going to be continuously growing here now. If we have a look at the intermediate malt productivity, 20 tons per minute. We're only consuming 10. Totally fine for lots of extra beer houses or whatever they call breweries. <laughs> beer houses. So we're totally fine on the malt front. <laughs> um, so yeah, we should definitely put this down somewhere, contain it in a little area, and then be good to go. Um, so I've actually got a little temporary docklands I placed down just to pull in a lot of extra timber because I was just a bit short. And as you may have, I should have said during the time lapse, we have maxed out our research institute. So we've fulfilled every single uh, item research that we could possibly get, the fields of research. So now we have cultural science, technological advancement, talent development. We can develop any item you can think of. It's at our disposal now. So we're totally fine on that front. So we're done. I actually thought I'd get an achievement for that, but you didn't, there wasn't one. I was a bit disappointed. Um, but yeah, currently just, um, disc uh, what's it called? Researching and, and unlocking more of the old world rum production. We're going to get another old world coffee production as well. And then we can just focus on item development from then on. So it all depends on whether or not we want to grow the engineer district. Because uh, we could do that. It's all about time now rather than the amount of points we have, right? So if you want to get items faster, I think you can have up to 10,000 engineers on a project just to speed it up to something like 10 minutes per item, which is pretty crazy. Don't know if I'll ever have the skill to be able to attain that it seems like quite a lot and with tourism around the corner i'm not really too sure where i'm gonna fit these engineers now like i said we do have an overabundance of sewing machines no and be quiet <laughs> we do have an overabundance of sewing machines and uh penny farthings and certain goods on looks that we can definitely bring in here we can also pull in more stuff through our docklands you know we're maxed out for gold we're totally fine so we could definitely squeeze a few more engineers in here, you know, and then make our projects go even faster to find those last few items we want for the botanical garden or whatever it may be. And all the while we should be doing our, yeah, our World's Fair, of course. Drakkar Carving, a Mesoan Harbor, and a Nazcan Tomb. Now I think I've just got that three times in a row, no joke. Because I just, during the time lapse, I donated all the items that I had duplicates of. Let's have a quick look. Yep, I got two extra Mesoan Harbors. Mesoan Harbors. I hate getting duplicates, man. I wish they would do something about that. Just lower the, anything, man. Like I would, I would put an item in here if I could just lower the chance of duplicates or something. <laughs> Sick of it. But that's kind of what the research institute's for, right? Sourcing your items yourself. Um. Anyways. So, over to Cape Trelawney. This area needs to be just radically overhauled. Some people said um, you could actually... A way of maybe improving this was just rotate them so that their dig area overlaps each other. Overlap each other. Actually, 
did plan that the first time I was doing it, but it's kind of difficult to get a harbor circle thing to overlap it when you do that. It's almost the same, if it makes any sense. Uh, it's definitely more efficient, to, don't get me wrong, to have, to have something like this. And then just to have two roads coming down, feed into a, what do you call it, like a warehouse just in the middle of it. It definitely is better that way, but I'm struggling to really, I've really messed around with a, for a very long time to try and work out how I'm going to lay this place out. And I just can't quite wrap my head around a, a, something I'm quite happy with yet. Uh, I actually originally had it where there was a central point here, and then the Docklands sat at the end of it, and then the Docklands wrapped around it. Which also kind of worked out and worked out well, uh, because what you can do is with certain modules, like the depot, you could have that overlap. So I had them going like this, and it was like wrapping around, but it looked weird, you know, it looked weird. So I'll figure that out. Um, the next thing we're going to need is brass. So let's just get buildings, slam down some buildings, and then we can maybe move them around in future. So brass is going to be something we need for glasses. And I think four of these will do it if they're powered. It's going to start smogging up the area, though. Oh, crap. Um, but yeah, a lot of this stuff is probably going to, like, move. But it's good just to get it down to get a feel for, like, the production rates. And then I'll move it and, like, contain them in little areas and little time lapses, you know? Kind of like how we did with Lusk. It was, like, a big mess. And then they had a big re one big reformatting. Because it's, it's kind of hard to forward plan all that when you don't exactly know how many buildings you're going to need until you can, like, look at the stat screen. So let's see. Uh, brass, producing eight, consuming four. That should be enough for the glasses factories. Question is, though... What about the raw materials? So the consumption rate is now 8 and 8 for copper and zinc. Now, I think we have free copper mines, don't we? We do. Let's get them all built. And I guess ideally you could even power these. Might as well just build all the mines and see, you know, where we end up with that. So it's just one free one, sorry. There we go. And then we can take a quick look and see where we're at. I don't think I can build any more zinc mines. I believe I built them all here because we really needed them in the old world. So we might have to do a little Docklands swap and bring in zinc that way. So let's have a quick look. So we're at 8 to 8. So that's the perfect consumption rate right now, at least for the brass. Copper's only used in brass, isn't it? I don't think you use it for anything else. I don't think so. Um... Probably the same with zinc. So we're a little short on zinc. Just a, two tons per minute. I don't know. Oh my god, excuse me. If it takes about, let's say, 25 minutes, this guy to come here, let's just even round it up to 30. Has hard How did you manage to wriggle out? Uh, so every 30 minutes, we're going to need two. So that's 60. So all we have to do is bring in 60 zinc, and we're good. We just need to find something that matches up with that. Maybe the glass, seeing as we're producing too much right now. Wow. 60? Wow, only 16. Crazy. I mean, you could definitely bring in more, couldn't you? Well, I don't think we need to. If I can leave it the way it is, then I'm happy with that. Um, but yeah, we'll just do that for now. I'll just check really quickly glasses, or glass. Oh yeah, 24 tons per minute, consuming 7. This is why I always say this island feels so easy. Obviously, if you're, if you're really maxing it out, I'm sure it gets difficult and stuff, but it's just like, you get so much space, you can just do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're up to 4,000 engineers now. So we're actually... Oh, shit. Have we crossed the threshold? We have. We've crossed the, crossed the next threshold just now, which means that we can extend our little area. And there you go. Two more palace wings. Further increasing our range. Beautiful. Obviously, wall off our little building area. And then we'll have a look at what we need to reach the next one. So just leave that like that for now. There we go. The palace continuously extends. I'm really... I don't know why I'm excited, but I'm excited to link that up. But I'd like to even maybe push it a bit further. Because on this side, for instance, we have these little indents, you know? I'd kind of like to have that on this side, too. Um, don't really feel like we need it on the sides. But I would like to have it here. If I can get there. Um, so yeah, so what do we need then after this? 59,000? Oh my god. Oh man, that's difficult. 
59,000, at least for me. One, so that's one, two, and then we need the next one after that. Judging by the rate, it's increasing. And then we need another one after that, because we've got five modules to go. That's one, that's two, that's three, that's four, and that's five. God damn. Yeah, 59,000. God damn, that is a lot. Okay. Well, looks like maybe we're going to put down some scholars in uh, Crown Falls, or just go with even more engineers, I guess. Actually, probably more engineers here, considering that, yeah, we're going to need them. I think it makes sense. I didn't realize the, it was going to increase by that much. Then what's the next one after that? I'll have to look it up, but I, I imagine it's like 65,000 or maybe even 70. I feel like I feel like I did look it up, and it says I remember thinking to myself, I have this number in my head anyway. 72,000 is what I needed to get to in, globally in order to... Um, Finish off the palace, so maybe that's the number we have to aim for. Surprisingly decent. Could always go with more um My analysis more is investors as well, thinking about it. We need the influence and we have too many gramophones and too many steam carriages, which is kind of like a really good problem to have, so that could be definitely one we improve on. Uh with items, obviously I've brought these guys up to forty four instead of just forty. Oh yeah, so I just remembered. People said you can extend your power. Life here is rather static. I know. Well, it's not that static, is it? Because you don't have any power. Um, a great... I always forget about it. I don't know why. But the um, the palace. The local department for the palace. So a local department lets us, you know, pick one of the um, policies and then specialize it to see what we can get a benefit of on a certain place. So we did it in Lusk. Oh, it doesn't go that far, though. Oh, I could make a paved road. It might go further. I was hoping to have it on this little island and make this like a sort of a regal island. I think that'd be kind of cool. Um, yeah, I thought it went further than that, though. But anyway, let's just throw it down there for a second. Let's just link this up this way. All I want to reach is the power. Oh, yeah, there we go. Got it. Local departments. So this is going to be a department of welfare. Ten area of influence for all public buildings. So it affects the bank. If I make a little connection at the back of the variety theater, it might even reach that. Because some of them are kind of lacking it. But I was going to build another variety theater here, so maybe they're fine. Anyway, yeah, let's just activate that now. And as you can see, we're affecting all these ones as well. We're going to be affecting these ones, which is great. Boom. And then select a policy. So extra income for all the houses that are affected. Artisan and engineers. We don't really need any money though. We're fine. Actually cr closing in on 100 million. Um, attractiveness. Area of influence for power plans. That's what we're looking for. Happiness for all services and then reduce needs for all drinks. Well, let's go with the uh, power. So let's just really quickly before I select it, we'll check where power ended. Oh, it's already reached more. All oh, right, just because of what we chose. And then if you really want to blast it, you can hit it with the uh, plus 15. So already we're getting plus 10. So if I just cancel that, that's where power ends, right? So it ends just as we're getting to the very bottom down here. That's actually kind of quite good to know. So I don't even need to go with the extra specialization. specialization. So 10 area of influence for all public buildings. I guess I didn't know that was a public building. Yeah, so that reaches almost all the way. It's just one household out here that's just quite not getting it. Everyone else seems to be okay. I wonder if I just did that. Oh, you bastard. <laughs> so close. Surely you could just run this the wire, man. Nothing <laughs> of a major discovery. Oh, I'm sure it is. Because obviously I could just bring it down a bit further, right? And swap this building out if I really wanted to. Let me just, before I even just check, because I might just go with that policy anyway to just cover it. But um, what would it, reduce needs for all drinks. That would be nice. That would be nice. Less beer, less coffee. Mm. Oh, it actually says it right there. I wasn't even reading the tooltip. 20% less schnapps, beer, rum, coffee, champagne, and hibiscus tea. Hmm. Yeah. Well, let's just, let's go with that. Let's see if I can just swap around these buildings. Because that's not a big deal. Just bringing that down one. Oh, the question is though, does the local department reach it? It would if I cut the fence. Okay. So 
I'm just doing the basically doing the opposite. Yep, we're affecting the power. Power is reaching all the way down to the bottom. It's reaching all the way to the top. Excellent. Did it. Just a little swap of those around. It's no big deal. It's basically the same thing anyway. Um, I'll probably cut that though. Don't know if we need it. Let's see if we need it. I think we actually probably do. <laughs> yeah, we do. All right. All right, cool. Well, anyway, that was a very long-winded way of doing that. Um, but it's done. And thanks for your suggestions on it. I always forget about the local department. Uh, but yeah, I think this would be a really cool area to design out in future. And just have, like, just a really regal, you know, palace-orientated little mini island thing here. I think that could look quite nice. Um, with our extra family, or farmers, yeah, I've been meaning to... I forgot to upgrade all these guys. Let's just get them. There we go, that should be back to where we were at. So the population will keep growing steadily because of that. Because of course that's 10 household households turning into 20. Ultimately need to decide where the villagers are going to live. Um, I was thinking just like spreading them all along the river like that, you know. I'm trying to have it like in some sort of organic layout. Because a lot of them do obviously live up here. Um, but I think ultimately we need a bit more. Ready, so let's have a look. How's a our situation? They're quite low on what they need, but they're all operating. Pretty happy about that, which means Spectacles should be operating. So let's check on Spectacles and see are we making enough now. Oh yeah, big time. Wow, what the hell is with this place? I'm, I'm like going crazy in my head because it's like... I feel like we need normally way more than that. We have four buildings. Is it? It's not even four, it's three. Three buildings producing four tons per minute, and that's way more than we need. For all of this? <laughs> God damn. Maybe I should build um, more engineers even up here or something, and keep extending them. I'm just surprised. Well, this is great, actually, because, yeah, if we do end up overproducing stuff here, maybe we could ship it over to the, to the old world and supply those guys, instead of doing it the other way around. This place is more space, and I did say I was going to turn it into a giant production place, so... Kind of makes sense. All right, um, let's see. The discovery, that's what it was. <laughs> awesome. Major discovery. I'm just going to get the next coffee one, and then once that's done, I think we're done with old world stuff for a while. We've got 30,000 on that one, 40,000 on the next one. Good to see it doesn't double. I was worried it would go up to 60,000. Seems like we're all right. Item development. It's a shame you can't develop an item and research at the same time. You're not allowed. Al albino gorilla. Baiji. Black rhino. Brother hilarious. <laughs> hey, br hey, affect schnapps distilleries and breweries. Productivity 50%, workforce reduced 50%, and he provides extra rum. That's pretty good, actually. Maybe we should get Brother hilarious if we build our next St. James's Gate. Now, let's, um, we haven't done our quest in a while. Our expedition. Snow globe, sails frozen, food rotten, and a ship on the brink of breaking. It's a blizzard. <laughs> All notion of time and direction has long been lost. A never-ending tempest of snow surrounds the ship, blurring the limits between night and day, or sky and sea. Stalactites have imprisoned your sails, binding them to the masts and making them creak under unexpected weight. Your crew feared they might break, but should anyone venture outside while violent winds whip the upper deck? Climb the mast and detach the frozen sails, 105 bonus chance. Protect the steamship in any way you can, 105, or stay inside and just hope that the supplies last. We're using our, oh yeah, on this quest, we picked up an altar of Upsidaisy, and I think I have one already, but that's actually feeding into the faith. We'll climb the mast, let's give it a go. Captain Felicity will do it herself. Boom, look at that. The ship can safely withstand the blizzard. Several sailors of impressive build climb your masts to unhook and detach the heavy sails, and despite the slippery wood and tightly frozen ropes, they manage to free the masts of dangerous weight. Of the dangerous weight. The barren poles stand tall against the receding storm. Morning light soon pierces the clouds. A good omen to salute your crew's efforts and accompany their celebration. Awesome. Keep going. That's a pirate hunt. Oh. 
so excited for um well i'm getting excited i'm actually i'm i'm dead inside to be honest with you guys but i rarely get excited for anything but i am looking forward to um tourism coming up i'm just looking forward to seeing it getting some fresh anno content especially into the let's play it's gonna be good i think i'll actually be streaming it for those who are interested twitch.tv slash republic of play nothing confirmed yet but every previous um i know 1800 thing has had twitch drops it's had you know I've been streaming it and things like that just before, and it'll probably just be testing out the mechanics within this save so I can do a review, and then just reverting back for the Let's Play. Attention for the Admiral. Um, so I'm just trying to think what do we want to do now? So I guess we'll just have to look at, yeah, what do, what do these guys need? Canned food, oh yeah, that's where we're going to have to be helping them out. But we're actually all almost up to 40. What they're going to need is light bulbs to stock up to 50, and then we can progress the Sunken Treasures quest line of building up Crown Farms. Uh, but yeah, let's have a look at canned food and see what the situation is. I'm just going to go all islands on this one and check what is canned food like back home. It's not very good because because we import it, of course, through our Z-Docklands. Um, but yeah, we could just check it here. So artisans, canned food. Hmm. Okay, let's check on then iron ore, seeing as it uses that specifically. We're making 12. A lot, we're full up, actually, so a lot of them aren't even moving. I think we take some iron from here and bring it to the old world, actually. Um, not that that matters too much. But yeah, so, and then there's two goo, art, artisanal kitchens, so goulash is just about oversupplied. All right, well, let's just slam down as many of these as we need <laughs> to figure out what the rates are. I imagine no more than three, but we'll see. That'll be four to four. I nailed it. And again, with different trade items or trade union items and stuff like that, we should be able to get even more out of them. Okay, uh, so a couple warehouses for the boys. Let's uh, just upgrade them a bit more. Make them look nice. Our artisans are quite low, why is that? Maybe we just ran out of canned food, actually. Like this place is a disaster over. zone. Oh, because we um, they're needed in this building. How could I forget that? Alright, so goulash we've got plenty of. We've got plenty of iron. The boys are getting to work. The lads making their canned food, and that should fix up canned food for our supply and demand. Man, I've never done a a good so fast. Um, yeah, so I guess let's uh, do some upgrading and bring some houses over just to finish off that area. So let's see if I can just clean this, tidy this place up. Just drag a couple over. I'm going to do this close range because it's a little difficult to remember how I initially designed this area and why it is the way it is, you know? <laughs> like, I feel like why wouldn't I have had... Oh, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Seems weird. That's why I feel like I want to redo it. But I'm sure at the time it made sense. <laughs> it's like, why would I leave a gap like that? I guess it's just because it couldn't fit anymore in. So, yeah. Hmm. Peculiar. And do you have everything? Variety theater. Yeah. Church. University. Yeah, I guess you're fine. And with the new local department, I'm sure things reach even further. I can't wait for the reforest tool as well, just to cover up some of my, some of the weird parts of the building, the way everything's on a grid, so. Alright. Can't fit that there. We've got lots of area around the church for, I suppose, fences and things. Very strange, yeah. Strange layouts, and I think I will redo this area eventually. So let's just move these over then temporarily and dump them down, because I think, I think ultimately, I am going to have to redo this. It was probably fine, but since I've moved houses and I just kind of grabbed everything and took everything away, I think I've messed up the road layout a bit. Like, the roads haven't changed, but how I'm putting them back in doesn't seem to be correct. I think. Anyways. Alright, let's fill that out. Let's fill that out. There we go. I'll upgrade them when we can. 
All right, so yeah, so another thing that I'm going to be doing in future is I want to turn this into a bit more of a state farm area, like I said before. So I think um, in the next episode, this one's a bit of a shorter one, but in the next episode, I'm just going to do these like isolated little builds. So I'll be like, yeah, I'm just going to grab some houses here, blueprint it all out, build a little brick wall around it, and then literally just move the whole thing to wherever I'm going to decide to end up putting it. Um, I wonder how oil is holding up as well. Ooh, maybe getting a little low. Maybe. Let's go all islands and search oil. Can we do that? It's not the oil I'm looking for. It's a construction material, sorry. Is it? I guess not. Let's just go all goods. Oil. There we go. Oh, well, we're producing way more than we're consuming, so it should be fine. We got like six ships, I think, carrying it around all the time, so... Should be okay. Seems to be getting quite low, though. It says greatly decreasing. Let's have a look at where the oil ships are. Hmm. None of them in the New World either. Sorry, I just I do that to hover over and check the radar. So there's none of the New World, none in Cape Trelawney. What about the Old World? Did it get stuck here for a while? None there either. What the hell? Are they all intercession? Interregional? Or am I just blind? Oh, some of them come out here, actually. I forgot that, yeah. There we go. We're spotting a couple of them now. They dropped some stuff at Mbesa. They do go to... Oh, my God. They don't go to Cape Trelawney. That's why. All right. Well, let's throw on this area as well, then. It's going to add significant time delays. Um, but yeah, where will we add them on this route? I suppose straight after the old world, before you get to Tabarim. There we go. So crown farms before Tabarim. So yeah, loads, unloads, 400 oil. That should be all right. Cause I did check all islands. So once they're just on the route, that should be okay. I think. Good thing I spotted it. I guess we were only using the oil that we have here. Also, I'd be meaning to move an oil deposit. That'd be nice as well. Start moving some of them into the collection range of these buildings. Good to actually be able to do that and grab it. 4,892 engineers. Just like that. 6,382 engineers. Boom. In the span of like one episode, we went from no engineers here to... It's nearly 7,000. More than that's on our home previous island. It's such a shame that you can't... And I kind of understand it, but like... Wouldn't it just be nice? You can only build a, a research institute in one place. Why can't I have like a commuter peer thing kind of situation where I can just use my engineers here? Like, I don't understand why limit that. Like, why not? Take the global, the global input. Because I could just build this out in the other place, but then I wouldn't get to have it here. It looks all nice here, you know? <laughs> God damn it. Beauty building versus efficiency and the rules of the game. Call in the big guns. Jolly Roger, pirates. The torn black flag bearing a skull and crossbones is a shock to those in your expedition who thought they were a dying breed. All right, do we maneuver into attack position or have an officer make a rousing speech? Make a rousing speech. Come on, Pope Lucius or whatever his name is. Your men are resolute following the speech. Your acting lieutenant points his saber to the sky to find the heavens themselves. If I, born with gas lightning, lighting, sorry, <laughs> heated water and a silver spoon in mouth, with each fresh admission, a cheer goes up. If I can enjoy chopping through these mangy pirates, then you lot will bloody well be in heaven. There's a ra raucous cheer as the men prepare for their orders. Board the pirate ship. Do it. It's an indeed a heroic charge, led by the acting lieutenant, your sailor- I like to think the Pope guy was leading it himself. What's his name? I keep forgetting. Lucius, yeah, the Rejuvenator. They followed him into battle. I don't want to hear your- Don't- Don't dare write in the comments that, oh, it was someone else leading it. You know it was Pope Lucius leading the charge. Led by Pope Lucius, your soldiers, your sailors hurtle down the boarding bridges and storm the pirate ship, leaving a mangled trail in their wake. The black flag is ripped from the mast and the pirate's booty is plundered. Unexpectedly, however, your lieutenant then impish, impishly permits the survivors to go free. Come now, be humble in thy victory, for how dull would the world be without these old pirate salts? There you go. It's definitely the Pope. 
Have we made it home yet? That's been out there for a long time. I'm kind of waiting on seeing what we get. I feel like the episode's probably gone on. I know I said it was going to be a shorter episode, but I feel like... Because it's hard for me to judge the time lapse. Because it's going to come after this. In terms of length. No? Still hasn't arrived back yet? Bastards. It's been out there for ages. Alright, well, let's check on... Oh, no. Not the Artisan District. Oh, crap. You can actually see a big hole in the building. Hello. Oh, no. The milk. The milk poster is still intact. Absolute heroes. Heroes in their own right. So cool being down on the ground, seeing all the little details. If you um, follow the firefighter that you meet on the ground, you can actually get a water hose yourself and put out fires, <laughs> which is pretty cool. God, my frame rate is getting so low. I'm in the market right now to get a new PC, so hopefully, um, I don't know, in a couple of weeks maybe, I'll be able to... Well, I already play at max graphics, actually, but maybe play at uh, 1440p and increase the quality of the videos, which would be nice and definitely improve the frame rate for sure. Yeah, so still no video, no um, ship came back. I really thought they'd just come back because sometimes they come in uh, on the other side of the map. But I guess not. All right, might have to leave it then. Oh, actually, did I check the... Oh, I forgot to run it again, did I? God damn. Champagne, gula. Oh shit, goulash is real low. Hmm. I thought I imported it, but maybe not. So brave, and so many lives saved. Just bring it up here. Bring Just bring two big batches of it up here. Keep us going for a long time. Bring Activate that little engine as well. What is it? Thirty percent movement speed. Cargo slowdown completely negated. Boom. Look at that, the speed. All right, nice. 53, 555. Five, five. All right, pretty good, actually. I'm pretty happy. Oh, crap. You know what? We haven't looked at um, Arthur Gasparov's Island. God, it's so uniform. Oddly aesthetically pleasing, though, right? I like the little gardens in between the um, uh, different districts. The cool thing, the real, it's crazy the attention to detail they went through in this game because. There's different build styles for the different players that play the game, the AI. Like, they actually went with the exact same artisan type of household all there, you know? To actually, like, even consider and think about doing that is so cool. And then Benty's Island is, like, completely different in terms of outlooks. She's got way more zoos and gardens and stuff. A lot of empty patches, if I'll be honest, but still pretty cool. Absolutely no need so to have two banks like that. <laughs> Crikey. That'd be a fun video. Rate your AI islands. <laughs> um... All right, guys, that's going to have to be it for this one. It has to be a bit of a short one because I spent so long doing all that stuff. You have no idea how long that takes. And then the uh, time lapse over here. So in the next one, it's just going to be all build, 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 build. And I'll see if what I can time lapse with regards to factories and stuff. And then start trying to work on a layout for the Docklands as well. Because I'm just not happy. Obviously, that's a disaster right now. But um, yeah, I want to figure out a situation that actually looks good. But I'm really happy. I mean, we did. I think I did a pretty good job with... Like how the um, brass has all worked out, how the rum has worked out, and the coffee now, so I'm pretty happy with how that's all come about. I just realized, I say that, we did just run out of zinc again, so why is that? Yeah, I think I need way more than that, because I haven't set a minimum to take to the old world, and the ships in the old world... Yeah, that's what's happening, because we're all... Okay, yeah, so I will, I will take in way more than that. I feel like, um... What was this? 10 tons per minute for glass that we're over. It's even more than that, so something like 10... 200, maybe? Yeah, I think you can actually afford to give away 200 here, so there you go. Zinc for days. Alright, cool, and then if we need to adjust it in future, we can. Alright, that's gonna be it. Uh, so I'll just have a little quick zoom in here as the last thing to have a look at. As the sun sets over Crown Farms, I think it looks awesome. I'm really happy with it. I love my T-shaped T junction thing. Maybe not as huge a fan if I want to be a little bit more self-critical as we get further and further up. I've tried to um, 
bend the buildings to make it look kind of more interesting. Like this kind of promenade leads up and then the two buildings create a cut. These are actually adjacent to each other. There's no gap. But like create that gap with the style of building then go through to the um, variety theater, which needs a bit of dressing up around it as well. All right, so that is going to be it for this episode. Thank you guys very much for watching, for all the support. And I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching, and remember, if you want to support this series directly, you can click the Join button to become a channel member. Doing so will get your name in the credits, as well as loyalty badges and emotes to use in the comments. If you don't see the Join button, it means the video has been copyright claimed, but you can still join from the channel page on desktop. You can also link your account to our Discord to get a special role on there that will give you access to the Senate House and a few other perks.